WSOU 89.5 FM. I'm Valentino, and I'm joined today with Greg Barnett. How are you doing today, Greg? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, thank you so much for coming on the show. A um, lot of very, very exciting stuff. Your new solo album, Don't Go Throw on Roses in My Grave, out now. How are you feeling now that it's out? I feel it's um, it's amazing. You know, it's been something that I've been working on for so long. It's, you know, there's times where it didn't feel real that it was actually ever going to come out. So, uh, you know, to have the music out there and, have, and see people reacting to it, it's been an incredible experience so far. And, you know, especially with your experience in, you know, the Menzingers, I feel like there's been traces of this kind of sound before. You know, you've had I Can't Stop Drinking, you've had Black Mass, but we've never seen, you know, you go full into this like Americana sound. You know, how is it to kind of dive into that? Yeah, I think that's, you know, that's a great point. Um, I've always kind of liked more folkier type music, singer, songwriter stuff. And that element definitely comes through in the Menzingers. But, you know, the Menzingers is um, a unit of the, the four of us. You know, we all bring our influences and that's kind of my influence. So doing an all, a whole album of exactly just however I wanted, really, you know, it was it was challenging. It was fun. It was everything. It was really cool to be able to... Um, you know, map it out that way of like really diving into the type, that style of music. Absolutely. And um, so I kind of want to ask, was the plan like, you know, always, oh, I got to write a solo record one day before I die? Or was this just like you're writing a few songs and you're like, all right, this doesn't quite fit the Menzingers. Let's just do something different. You know what? I guess it's a mixture of both. <laughs> I think I, I always had a dream to be able to do something like that. I've always really liked the idea of um, being an artist that had a bunch of different projects. I want to just release a lot of music. I write a lot of music. So I'm, I'm really, I'm really into that. And I'm really pushing that for the future of just releasing music with the Menzingers solo, just anything, you know? So that was definitely something I've always wanted to do, but also these, I was just writing songs that weren't necessarily fitting for the Menzingers. So I had an opportunity, some downtime from touring and, and was like, I would love to pursue this. Exactly. It's just so cool that like, you know, you've always had this kind of in the back of your head and then just to see it kind of come to fruition, you know, see it just fleshed out in, in full. Um, do you remember the moment when, when you were done writing these songs and you're like, I have a full solo record here? Yeah, it was pretty surreal. I think it was, you know, it was right before I was going into the studio and I knew I had 10 songs all completed and I was going into the studio the next day and it was, wow, I did it. I actually, you know, I'm I haven't fully done it yet, but you know, the, the whole idea is there and it's going to happen. It was pretty crazy that night before going into the studio. And, you know, I'm sure it's different because like with the Menzingers, you're right. You know, it's four people all, you know, contributing their own different, you know, uh, enthusiasm, influences, all that sort of stuff. Whereas with this, it's like a hundred percent you, which mm -hmm. is good, but also there's a lot more work on that. You know, there's a lot of other stuff to do. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That was like kind of the crazy part too of just, um, you know, you're not just writing the the lyrics and the guitar, you're writing the drum parts, you're writing, you know, the keyboard parts. Um, Eric, who's in the Menzingers, he wrote all the bass parts. Um, so that, you know, definitely helped because I cannot play bass for the life of me. Uh, so, you know, having a really talented bass made this we have played drums. I, I had ideas for drums, but I'm also not a drummer. I can I can more like think about drums and I know how I want them to sound and what I want to happen, but I can't physically play them all that well. So <laughs> he's a great drummer. And it was, uh, it was pretty awesome to have my friends come in and uh, play on it too. Well, you know, that's so great to hear because typically with like solo albums, it's like, oh, you know, I, yeah, I did this. But hearing it from you, it's such a collaborative process as well, you know? Sure. Yeah, that was, you know, I'm, I love collaborating with music. Um, the thing that I was most excited about was to write songs by myself, mainly as a challenge to see, you know, if I could write good quality songs just completely by myself. Um, but I just love being able to collaborate with other musicians after the song has been crafted, you know, so that this was a really cool experience of doing that and being able to be in like, hey, I, I want this, I want this and kind of orchestrate how I want the song to, to happen. And then having really talented musicians being able to be like, I can do that, you know, and they can, they just could blow my mind with what they, what they're able to come up with. It was really cool. Oh, exactly. And, and I imagine like, you know, all, all these different musicians, you know, they know you for the Menzingers, which, which is a mm -hmm. very like punk, you know, band. You guys have very, very strong punk elements. Um, I can imagine when you show them these, you know, tracks for the first time and, you know, there's a harmonica, you know, those yeah. that, that slide guitar, like it's gotta be a little, yeah shocking for them when they first heard it. 
yeah i mean not even just for them but also for like I, I feel like my family my friends like i think the fan base that likes the menzingers it was like there's a lot going in but i think that's what i really liked about it was i i felt like i had complete creative control to just do whatever the hell i wanted and that's you know that's that's a pretty amazing feeling when you when you're the one creating the song 100 percent essentially you know there there is no preconceived notions from what people want it to be or think it should be it's just i'm gonna do what i want to do because if not this just doesn't exist so it was pretty cool absolutely and you know i think it's just super fun to even see the fan base just accept this you know like yeah, especially yeah. in the punk scene I, I i love rock and i love punk rock but i feel like the fan base is always so oh that's not hardcore that's post-hardcore oh that's not that's not metal that's this but like it's nice to just see them be like that's punk this is like western americana it's all good <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, it's been fun going on tour. I just completed a two, two and a half week tour doing this album. And, uh, you know, it was amazing getting to talk to people after the show. And, uh, you know, just people really latched on and in, in ways that I may not have seen going into it. I think sometimes when you write like really personal songs, they feel, you know, you write them and they feel like yours, but then you release them and they're just, they're everyone's now, you know, people latch on to the stories that I had in the songs because they relate to them as well. And I don't know, it's just a, it's a nice reminder. I love being able to release music like this because it's, you, you remember how important it is to, uh, you know, when you hear an album that, like when I hear an album that I love and I'm inspired by it, it's like to be able to do that for somebody else is just such an incredible feeling. Absolutely. And, um, you know, you mentioned these live shows, that tour was awesome, but I kind of mm -hmm. want to get your opinion on this is that like, I feel like, what, you know, when you play with the Menzingers, there's a lot of like, you know, like energy, you know, you're jumping up and down. Um, and, you know, they have a lot of people to kind of work off of. Whereas during these live shows, during the solo tour, you know, it's just you in front of this crowd, you know what I mean? And a lot of the songs are yeah. very not like slower, but definitely like a, of, a, of a slower pace. Um, mm -hmm. How was it still kind of like, you know, hook the audience into that? Well, it was really fun because it was a completely different uh, type of show. And it was one that I was really excited to try. Um, the, you know, the Menzingers live set is, you know, can you get a, a thousand bodies moving around and crowd surfing and bouncing off of each other's for an hour and a half, where this was, let's captivate them with the music. You know, people aren't going to be moving around and that's okay. It's not that kind of show. And I wanted to you know, craft stories in between and be able to explain the songs in a way that can captivate the audience and then perform it in a way that, you know, you don't need to physically bash into somebody. <laughs> so, you know, it was, it was a fun experience. And I think that like this solo record, there's just so much emotion, you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah, it, it, it's, it's got that country elements and it's acoustic, but there's just so much soul in there, you know, especially at moments like Greyhound Station, you know what I mean? That like, mm -hmm you know, you're right. It's not that kind of punk rock, like crazy, you know, hype up show, but like you just sit there and you just feel something, you know? That's awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, uh, that was kind of the, the whole idea of the record. I wanted to write a storytelling album and, you know, I wanted to have the music translate in a way that maybe it can't in a Menzinger's way, you know, I mean, it's still like me singing songs. So, so I think there's something for a Menzingers fan to get into with it. Like, don't get me wrong, but I think I had more time to kind of um, craft stories because the songs are a little bit longer. I'm able to you know, have longer verses and the, the element isn't, let's get a chanty hook so a thousand people could sing along. It was, well, let's get the story across, right? You know, so it's just a whole different style of songwriting that was really fun. You know, and that's something very, very interesting that I never thought of. But like hearing you say that, yeah, that makes total sense. Like these songs are just stories in and of itself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like this is a very story driven record. And I think hearing it, you kind of you kind of go through this cool little journey. You know what I mean? And it's kind of cool awesome. to, uh, you know, once the record's done, you know, you have so many different moments and highlights. And it's just cool, uh, you know, how you're able to just like make this cohesive piece. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, that's the goal. It's like I, you know, you're, I kind of went into it being like every song should feel like a short story and you can put them together and it feels complete in a, in a way as a collective body. And, um, you know, I think, I think it kind of does that. And I'm pretty proud of it. I really am. 
Absolutely. And, you know, I think that's the hardest part about a record is I've listened to albums where it feels like 12 singles on a record, but it's Mm -hmm. not an album. It's 12 singles on a record. (laughs) And uh, to make it have every song be unique, bring something new to the table, but also like be under the same umbrella of this record is is a very tough thing to do. Yeah, I I agree. Yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, So I kind of want to get your opinion a little bit on when you were recording these songs in the studio. Sure. Tell me a little bit about, you know, any studio stories you have, your favorite part about this recording process for this record. Yeah, I mean, it was amazing. I I recorded with um, Will Yip, who um, recorded the last two Menzingers records and is a very close friend and collaborator. And, uh, you know, he just, uh, we just worked so well together. It was an amazing experience. Um, Like I said, he played drums and then Eric uh, played bass. Joe came in and did all the percussion on the album. And, you know, it was just a really fun it was a really fun experience. It was, you know, I, I, I would go in and I tracked all the guitars in the live room and I sang in the live room, which is really fun because I, I just cranked the amps up to 10 and like you felt, you physically felt the amps like resonating through your body while you're playing. <laughs> As opposed to like in a studio, a lot of times you go into a separate control room to track your guitar. It was like, no, I want, I want to feel, uh, feel the guitar. So that was pretty fun. And, uh, yeah, it was, you know, it was just, it was really, I say this in a good way. It was really easy. It was like, it, there wasn't these challenges where you're screaming and you can't figure out what you're doing, like blowing your voice out. It was like, it was really fun. And I just had a great time. And then right when it was wrapped up, Tom from the band took all the photos for the album. So it was just, it was fun to have the, the support of all my friends and bandmates and be able to do something, you know, that just really felt like me I guess yeah and you know that's that's super interesting to even just hear um you know that like when you're in the studio you want to feel that guitar you know you you, you, want, yeah. you want you want to experience it on, on like a physical form and I think that's like why I love concerts so much is um mm-hmm. you know I can listen to a stuff studio and it's great and I, and I have a great time but like when you're in a crowd when you're in a pit and you're surrounded by people it's like you're like physically feeling the music as well as like hearing it you know it, it's out of yeah. experience it's amazing, isn't it? It's like, it's so crazy. It's like, yeah, I don't know. It's such a, one of those things that, you know, yeah, I listen to records all the time, but when you go and see a show, when you see it happen in front of you, people performing music, like it's just a whole out of body experience, right? It's so cool. It absolutely is. Um, and I do want to ask, you know, obviously this was an incredible uh, departure from your previous sound. It was a success. It was a success, you know, financially, chart wise, you know, among the fans. I want to ask, is there going to be another one in the works? Like, do you have any plans or is that like ruled out completely? No, absolutely. I'm, I'm definitely going to keep doing it. it this was something that gave me so much joy and, uh, you know, creative, like, I don't know, confidence in myself. And it's just I, I had an absolute blast. Um, you know, it's, I'm not exactly sure when I'll be able to do another one, you know, it might take a while, but I, we're writing the Menzingers record right now. So like all focus is on that, but I feel like once that's wrapped up, then I can kind of go back into this world. And I just kind of feel like it's going to be one of those things where I'm able to go back and forth um, just because I'm somebody that always likes to write music. I need, I always need to have a creative musical project happening in my life. So I'm trying not to let any downtime pass. I'm just going to, that's, I'm kind of willing into existence that I'm just going to release music now indefinitely (laughs) in between, you know. (laughs) And, you know, that's the thing is that like, there's always going to be a place for this. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. there's, you know, I, I, I don't think the Menzinger is going to write a sole Americana country record and, you know, nothing yeah. else. Like, I think that there's always going to be a, like an area for this outlet, you know, that you can express For, for sure. Yeah, for sure. It just feels like it's, you know, this pretty exciting part of my life that I get to have now. <laughs> and, you know, you mentioned recording the new Menzinger's record. I do have to ask, um, like, are we allowed to say what percentage are, are we done? Can we expect it in 2022 or is it going to be a 2023 kind of thing? I, I, I can't give away too much yet, but we do, we've got to, I think we've finally, we've got enough songs now where we see the vision of it. And that's kind of like the most important part where you can start and you, know, you get a handful of songs and then you can go, okay, oh, we're doing this now. Let's, let's, let's dive in. Let's go for it. So it's been really exciting. I mean, I think we're definitely writing the best songs we've ever written, which is kind of like surreal. And I know a lot of bands say that, but I really feel that this time, <laughs> you know, I mean, like, I'm not just, blown smoke i actually believe that so it's 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 very exciting 
Well, that's the thing is like as a band, that's the way it should be. If your new album yeah. is the best you've ever written, you're doing it right. You know, like, yes. The yes. second you're like, all right, let's write after the party too. Let's write on yep. the impossible <laughs> past too. Like that's going to yep. be like, then you're putting in your paycheck, you know? Yep. Yep. No, it's like, we want to do something pretty, you know, something that feels like us, but still feels really different. And, um, you know, we're just kind of challenging ourselves in ways that we never really have before, which is really cool. Yeah. And um, I, I do kind of want to ask a little bit about this because like you are one of the many bands that sadly dropped your record in like, you know, late 2019 and then yeah. boom, your whole touring cycle just derailed of, you know, yeah. obvious reasons. Um, you know, what was it like to finally pick up after two years of not being able to tour on a record that was like almost three years old? Like it, it's just a weird time to. <laughs> yeah, to do. it was, it was so weird. I mean, it, it was awesome to get back and, and play music again. It was like pretty surreal to the point where, you know, I, I don't really think I get all that nervous, but I was pretty nervous. You know, all of a sudden you're getting up and you just have people staring at you and you're like, wow, I haven't done this in a while. Like, but you dive right back into it so quickly and you just like it all of a sudden it becomes like riding a bike and it just felt really good to, you know, have that feeling again, have that sense of purpose and excitement of, of getting to perform music, getting to play these songs that mean so much to us, and see how much they still mean to people. And, and you know, what's really interesting too is that a lot of the songs mean different things now after what everybody went through. And uh, that's been, it's been pretty wild, you know? It's like a lot of people said that they, the band just meant a lot to them um, during, you know, during the pandemic and everything. So it's, it's pretty cool to hear that. You know, and I think that that's a really good way to put it, because I saw the Menzingers for the first time at a Vans Warp Tour 25th anniversary Atlantic City. Oh, cool. Nice. And that was a great time. But again, it was more of like a fun, heartfelt, yeah, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, just partying on the beach of Atlantic City. And then I saw you guys again, Le Poisson Rouge, LPR, New York. Oh, after. nice everything that had gone down and just having live music back again it was more of an emotional experience than like yeah. you know, fun on the beach it was more of like oh we're back I i'm back this is great <laughs> you know yeah it's definitely that feeling it's been pretty you know it's been pretty incredible and we're gearing up to go out on out on tour we go out next friday as our first show so that's you know i'm I'm getting back in it, you know, like that, that mindset of being at, being at a show every day. I'm, I'm just so grateful for it. Absolutely. And, you know, for all of our New Jersey and New York listeners, you guys are coming to the Starlin Ballroom April 2nd. It's going to be a really good tour. Anybody that's listening to this doesn't want to miss that date. Um, also very exciting openers. Oso Oso and Sincere Engineer. It's got a really stacked lineup on this tour. It's going to be a good time. Yeah. We're so excited about it. Absolutely. Well, you know, but before we end today, I wanted to thank you so much for, you know, hopping on the call, talking with me, talking about this new solo album, this new Menzingers album in the, uh, in the process. Um, I got one more question for you today. And, um, you know, I know that you had the little brief run of solo tours, you know, sure. um, earlier. I want to ask, is there a plan for another solo mm -hmm. tour? Is, is there going to be more opportunities for fans to hear these tracks live? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm going overseas in June and I'm doing a solo tour there. I got to show up in Canada. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm going to, it's going to be really busy. I'm just, Menzingers have a lot of touring and writing and recording, but all, any type of downtime, I'm going to be doing this. So um, absolutely, absolutely New York, New Jersey area. I will be performing solo for you very soon. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Very, very exciting to hear. Well, again, Greg, thank you so much for talking to me today. We really appreciate it. One more time, April 2nd, Starlin Ballroom, Sarahville, New Jersey. You guys don't want to miss this. Also, you know, new record, Don't Go Throwing Roses in My Grave, available everywhere now. And, you know, whenever that new Menzingers records drop, you can hear it on WSW 89.5. Amazing. Thank you so much for the support and for the call.